the best thing about tonight's that we're not fighting. Hi everyone, it's Marie and I'm back with another video and from now on I'm gonna to try to post every Monday. So for this Monday I was trying to come up with ideas and I decided to read my old school journal just because I thought it'd be interesting to look back on it and you know kind of my interests and what I wrote in here and stuff. So yeah, and I'm trying to stay consistent. So this is what it looks like. Um, at my school we had these journals in literature class and basically she just handed out a composition book and we had to write at least five times a week for 10 minutes and we had like days we turn once a week so yeah um mine was just a composition book but i mod podged it and put newspaper all over and mod podged over that uh this is what the front page looks like i kind of just doodled in it throughout the year but i just wrote um 10 minutes writing five times a week due on wednesday um so the beginning, I was really into Grey's Anatomy at this time. I still love Grey's Anatomy, but I was like really into it then. So I basically like wrote about it kind of in my own way. Like I changed some of the names and stuff and changed a little bit of the stories, but yeah. And she even asked me like, did you come up with that? I was like, no, it's a TV show because she like, she really liked it. So, but then eventually I like started writing other stuff and the first other thing I wrote was this um, poem called To This Day by Shane Coyhan. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but you should definitely look this up. I cannot read the whole thing right now just because um, it's really long. It took me like two hours to write. Um, so I couldn't include all of this because um, the whole poem because some stuff I didn't think would be appropriate for school, but my favorite line of it, um, is, it's online, and I'm just gonna read it now. So it's, he was a broken branch, grafted onto a different family tree, adopted, but not because his parents opted for a different destiny. He was three when he became a mixed drink of one part alone and two parts tragedy. Started therapy in eighth grade, had a personality made up of tests and pills. Lived like the uphills were mountains and the downhills were cliffs. Four-fifths suicidal, a tidal wave of antidepressants, and an adolescence of being called Popper. One part because of the pills and 99 parts because of the cruelty. He tried to kill himself in grade 10 when a kid who still had his mom and dad had the audacity to tell him, get over it. As if depression is something that can be remedied by any of the contents found in a first aid kit. To this day, he has a stick of TNT lit from both ends. He could describe you in detail the way the sky bends in the moments before it's about to fall. And that despite an army of friends who all call him an inspiration, he remains a conversation piece between people who can't understand. Sometimes being drug free has less to do with addiction and more to do with sanity. So I just, I just really like that one. Um, but yeah, there's like pages and pages on this. Uh, it's not really focusing. But yeah, definitely check that poem out. Um, in this video, I'm not going to be able to read everything, obviously, that I'd like because it would just take too long. But yeah, I also wrote down like his explanation um, for why he wrote the poem and stuff. Next, I wrote about um, Christmas. And it was basically how, um, basically a uh, vice principal at our school during um, advisory, like asked, what do you guys want for Christmas and stuff? And like friends were asking, no, what do you even, what do you want for Christmas or whatever? And I was kind of writing how what I wanted wasn't a materialistic gift and you know, how I wanted the old Christmas, what it was like when I was a kid, when you tried so hard to just like not be on the naughty list and you baked cookies for Santa and that kind of stuff. So that was that. I like went really into detail about that. Um, Next, I wrote about music because music has just had a huge impact in my life and has helped me through so much. So, um, honestly, there's so much more I can write about music than just that, but a lot of it was really personal, so I didn't write about it. But yeah, a lot of it was just how people judge your music and your taste without even realizing, like, what it means to you or how it has affected your life. They just go and say stuff without thinking about it. And, you know, people have always they've done that to me before like even my friends and it's always been very like it's a hurtful thing to do and people don't see it but I basically wrote what it meant to me and how it's impacted me um next it was the lyrics to a song called private fears in public places by front porch step and I love this song I'll just um, read the first part 
So cold as the wind it blows your hair, so warm as your touch upon my skin. How tired am I of being scared, but how awake am I now that I know you're here? Cause I'd rather fight with you than laugh with another. I'd rather freeze in your arms and be warm under covers. And I'd let you hit me before I ever let you hit the floor. And I'd rather choke than to breathe in your absence. I'd rather feel your warmth than feel your passion than feel another's passion. And I'd rather die on the day that I give you a kiss than spend the rest of my life knowing I never did. So that's just part of it. I wrote other song lyrics in here too. And then here I was gonna do this thing of like the names of the bands I liked. Um, that was bands and then yeah, but I just scribbled it out because I don't know. I felt like the judge name and stuff, and I just I ended up liking it. Um, and this is some of my favorite quotes from books I've read, books I liked, and or books I'm reading. Um, first was The Great Gatsby, and so the loneliest moment in someone's life is when they're waiting, watching their whole world fall apart, and all they can do is stare blankly. Um, another quote is angry and half in love with her and tremendously sorry I turned away. And there's like this one quote like right here that I like really like, but I just don't want to read. But yeah, definitely, uh, I would definitely suggest reading that book. Um, Let us learn to show our friendship for a man when he is alive and not after he is dead. I love that one. And next is like one of my favorite books and it's Looking for Alaska. I love this book so much. Um, again, I wish I could read all of this. Okay, one quote is, when I look at my room, I see a girl who loves books. Um, another is, I may die young, but at least I'll die smart. Um, yeah, so, and then another is, what you must understand me, what you must understand about me is I'm a deeply unhappy person. And, yeah, that's basically it. And I'm not going to read, like, my favorite part because it's actually a big spoiler for the book, so... Okay, then I went on this big kind of rant about uh, education in the school school system, and basically this is a really crappy illustration of it, but it's how teachers shape your beliefs, your intelligence, and all this into kind of the standardized test and the system, and they try to fit all these students into these different things when everyone is different. So it shows like, I use wood as an example, because you like carve wood, like act, the teacher is the ax basically in their wood and see the kid goes in like that and then like they all end up the same shape um oh again everyone's so unique but that was just like relating to standards tests and a lot of that and i'm just i did not like the school system i was in um <laughs> an example i used for this was casey neistat i don't know a long time about this because he like dropped out of high school at one point and now he you know famous on youtube he has his own life he does what we want of course there's that's not everyone, but it's possible, you know? And we're in such a system in society where it's so necessary getting an education for you to become successful, I'll say. To the point where most people, they can't do anything unless they spend like, I don't know, like 15 plus years in school. Um, so the next is, I hate school, but I do not hate education. There's a difference. And this is a quote by Anonymous. And again, I just like went, a little more further into that um, and then the next one was titled future or past and this is just kind of how like I really I feel like a lot of people think about the future and the past in a way to escape the presence the present and I kind of just wrote um, about stuff like that I was thinking like how much sometimes I want to go to the future and I want to travel and I want to be adult and I want to do this and then other times I wish I was a little kid again you know doing little kid stuff so and I wrote about the present and like reality um that I like read writing as like my teacher because she would sometimes comment on stuff next is this quote um thing called I was dying and this has been on the internet but it's by anonymous and it says first I was dying to finish high school and start college and then I was dying to finish college and start working and then I was dying to marry and have children and then I was dying for my children to grow old enough for school so I could return to work and then I was dying to retire and now I'm dying and suddenly I realize I forgot to live anonymous and sorry if I'm reading this fast I'm just trying to like keep this video not too long um, next thing is titled Graveyards, and this was because that day my brother had come home from school and there was a speaker at his school who basically asked like what's the richest place in the world, 
and all these kids just say like different stuff or like Beverly Hills or whatever. Um, and the guy answered graveyards, and it's because uh, people like all their dreams and telling just they, they die there, all their ideas that they never took the time to illustrate in the world, they're there in graveyards. And I actually found that like really interesting. He's like, the cure for cancer is probably in a graveyard. And hey, it could be, because so many people like, they use fear as a way to, of not doing stuff and also just like their situation. So that was really interesting, kind of went on about that. And the next one was titled, Reality Sucks or Does It? And it was kind of about how making the world a better place and stuff. And I kind of went on about for that. Uh, went on a while about that. And then the next is A Broken Jar by La Dispute. And this is a great song. I love it. You should definitely look it up. I don't have time to like read it all, but definitely. And just La Dispute in general. And then next is Terrible Things by Mayday Parade. And um, if you saw my vlog, Mayday Parade was actually on there. I love them. Definitely should check them out. Next is this like poem called Traffic Light um, by Anonymous. And it goes, the traffic light inside my head is always green and never red. Uh, my thoughts, my dreams, and all my fears, they all speed past my listening ears. I close my eyes to block it out, but inside my head they rush about. I take a breath to slow it down, but upon my face appears a frown. My heart beats fast, but my breathing slows. I breathe in life, then out it goes. My body is numb, one thing is clear. I've lost count of the days, the months, and the years. This traffic light inside my head, I'm scared of the day when it turns red. And then the next thing is titled My House because um, I had a house fire recently when I like wrote this. Um, See, so yeah, I was kind of like explaining that because I was supposed to move in around that date. Of course, it got postponed and delayed, which it did a lot. But yeah, I kind of explained all that. Um, and then I have this whole thing of Meredith Grey quotes. Um, so I'll, Meredith Grey, Grey quotes. Um, yeah, definitely watch Grey's Anatomy. I love that show. And then next is places I want to travel. I just wrote places with like a little description of why. And it was like France, Sydney, Australia, and then under that Bondi Beach in Sydney, Australia. And then Adelaide, Australia, Hawaii, Bora Bora, the Bahamas, California, Dubai, um, and Seattle, Washington. Um, and then I wrote a little bit more in my house. Again, the date got more postponed, and I was just, yeah. Um, then I wrote a little about high school and stuff. Plans for high school. And then we had this literature assignment where it was like, uh, I have it here. It was, has there ever been a time in your life when someone told you that something improbable would happen and it did? And I, yeah, I used the example of getting kicked out of my old school. Kicked out. Basically, they're really unprofessional, small private school. But when we told them that my little brother and little sister were in change schools, they basically said, we're taking your scholarships. We don't want any of you guys to come back. Very rude about it, very unprofessional don't miss that school but yeah um next was debate titled debate competition because in this time i was in debate and basically it was like i was on the fence of if, sh if i should do it or not because i really struggle with public speaking sometimes and stuff like that but i ended up doing it and actually went really well um next is titled letters to the dead because i came across a book title similar to that <coughs> and then this girl had like this school assignment and she wrote a letter to dead people, but like people she wished she could have said stuff to or stuff. And she first did Kurt Cobain, and I was like, dude, I'll totally do that. So I did Kurt Cobain, and then this, the next I did after that was Robin Williams. Um, yeah. Again, big letters. And then I wrote about Warp Tour and kind of what it's really about. I feel like a lot of people judge it um, who aren't in that kind of, um, how would I say this? Um, who aren't. I don't know, who aren't into the bands or don't really know people who are into bands like that. I feel like a lot of them judge it for the way people look or the way some of the music sounds. So one quote I used, um, people hear the screaming, but they don't hear the meaning. And that, like, I totally get. Like, some people, they don't understand screamo, they just make fun of it. But if you look at actual lyrics compared to, like, other big pop artists like Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, they are so much more meaningful and genuine and... In today's society, people just, they, they ignore that. They just, and they make fun of people and blah, blah, blah. They say, oh, this artist is better. I like being this fan so much more because of this. And it's like, 
when you look at the actual lyrics, like, <laughs> yeah, anyway, kind of went on about that. And then the last one was end of the year, and I kind of just wrote about my last entry, how my year went, um, good, the bad. I didn't really enjoy my school year, but I kind of wrote how it really truly was. Um, yeah, so vitamin feature, and that was my last entry. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will try to have another one up on Monday. Um, yeah, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.